Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a tree hook. Now, this could be used for keychains, or if you made a little slightly larger version of this, it makes a great coat hook as well. Now, I'm going to be using this blank here that you've seen me use for my Christmas ornament video. If you watch that video, or if you haven't seen it yet, go check it here. It was in conjunction with a uh, whole thing in a playlist. I'll just put the playlist right here uh, instead of just the hook video. Uh, but it was the 10 uh, guide to 10 hand forged Christmas gifts that you can make. That's a great ebook that Jessica and I have released that will be handy to you if you want to start making a bunch of items for next Christmas. That way you're ready for all the shows and stuff. It's never too early to start making things in Christmas presents and yada yada things like that. But anyways, in that ebook, there's also, it comes with templates. There was templates for things like this, and I'm gonna offer the, this template for free. If you go to the link in the description, which is at my website, blacksmithpdfs.com, and uh, you can download a paper template that's to scale that you can then paste on a piece of metal and then cut out this Christmas tree. Uh, again, that'll be free of charge. All you gotta do is go over and download it at our website, blacksmithpdfs.com. So, one, little thing that I'll note here. This here is from the same looks as the Christmas, again, that Christmas ornament. But we wanna turn this into a cabin hook. And if you notice, this isn't really conducive to doing a hook. So in that, temp the template will be a revised one for this one specifically, where it'll have a long tail out here that's about 3 8 by about three inches. So 3 8 or 9.5 mil, by about 75 mil long or three inches long by three eighths wide. That'll be appropriate for drawing out a keychain hook or drawing out anything that you want uh, for keys or this or that. You could split it and make it a split hook and uh, really just kind of decide how you want. So without further ado, let's get to smithing on this and forging. We'll heat this up and we will go to town. So here we go. Get her good and hot, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so the first step in this process, you, you want to take and get and work on your hook end. So in this case, I've got to draw this material down. So this is going to take me a little extra work that most likely it won't take you. And if my tongs would stop kicking around, it's kind of hard to hold this item. I would have made that little oopsie there on the edge, but that's from my tongs slipping. Now, if you do use a template similar to this one, this will give you, well, pretty good forging practice on knowing how to properly uh, hit right in using the edge of your anvil to neck down material. So, so that could be handy in of itself. There we go, got a little bit there. We'll take another heat on it. And now this next time we can get a lot more violent with this because we have undertook the process now of starting to squeeze out that material, that flat material. I should also mention these are made out of eighth inch thick material uh, or roughly about three mil material. That's flat material basically and they're cut out. And it's about two inches wide, so about 50 mil wide. You don't have to make it, you don't have to make it those exact dimensions. You could do whatever you like with it. Uh, those are just in general, some suggestions for forging size. Just that up there. That's really too cold to keep going on, so I'm gonna go ahead and heat it back up. 
but you can see we can draw it out. Now you can see the value of having a 3 8 inch stem to begin with. It's a lot more valuable to do that. Okay, I went ahead and flipped the tree around, and now we are going to forge in the texture. I've switched cross peens to a cross peen hammer that has a much sharper uh, peen to it. And I'm going to start flaring out. and texturing at the same time, the bottom of the tree. Next heat, I'll bring it out again. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to create evergreen bows, okay? So if you look at trees, you can see that the bows of the evergreen usually overlap. So if you start here on the bottom bow, and then you go ahead and work up to the next one, your hammer blows will look like they've overlapped up here. You'll get kind of a little bit of a line. You'll see it here in a minute. And you keep doing that to the progressive branches, if you will, or the evergreen bows as you go up the way here. And you'll notice that, hopefully I'm in shot here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Uh, you'll notice it'll look like it overlaps. It's just a little attention to detail that makes the piece really come together in the end. So we'll go ahead and heat this up again. Get it nice and hot, and we'll work on that next little evergreen bow. So I'll be right back with you as soon as we get that accomplished. Get that nice and hot. It's nice and hot again. Slightly overlapping my hammer blows onto the previous forging. And again, hammering in a fanning out kind of nature of things. And doing it to the next one up. and doing it to the last one. And then we're gonna flatten it back out. And now before we head on to the actual hook portion of it, we are going to give this a little bit of shape. We want to put a little bit of dishing in this evergreen tree, basically to get a little bit of a dome or a little concavity on the back side. So this way it just pops. It looks like it stands off the wall a little bit. So we'll do that next. And then we will be on to bending up the hook. And you guys can choose at this point whether you want to punch the holes or if you want to drill them. If you punch them, Make sure you punch them undersized, so this way when this, when you dome this piece and that hole stretches out a little bit, it's the proper size. So punch it with a really small punch to punch the holes through, uh, and then dome it and go on about your business. I just go ahead and drill them. I think it's easier to just drill two holes in it in an inconspicuous way, and then that way it makes a really nice hook. But you guys can see how attractive that looks already, or hopefully it looks attractive to you. So now we'll go ahead, I'll heat this back up. We'll put a curvature in here and then finish off the hook. So you guys can see how it looks when it's all finished up. Okay, so now using the cross pin and the hammer and coming to the step of the anvil, I'm gonna go ahead and hammer in a little bit of curve or a little bit of concavity to the back side of this tree that I'm gonna later refine on the front by just hammering straight down. And that's gonna help push that back flat against the wall again. 
but we don't want to hammer, we kind of want to hammer off to the left and right a little bit if we can. You don't want to hammer completely in the center. And that gives us just a little bit of concavity to it, so it pulls it right off the wall, just a little bit. <coughs> That's what we're looking for there. Brush it up really nicely here so you can see how that looks. And hopefully you all can see just a little bit of that bow that's there. I think it looks the best that way. Again, it gives it a little more visual interest when it's sitting against the wall. Now, we'll flip it around. Now that that's nice and clean. And we will move on to forging out this little hook in. So for the hook in, you can go as fancy or non-fancy as you like. I don't try to be too fancy with it. Um, you know, we're just going to start it over the edge of the anvil, put a little rat's curl on there, a little curly cue at the end. That's going to be good enough there, just so it doesn't snag things. I'll cool that off in water a bit, just so we don't deform it. And then I'll bend the rest of the hook. Again, nothing real special here. We're just trying to get, get a little hook bent up into a J. I wouldn't do, I wouldn't go too crazy on this. This is just a little bit of forming. You do, however, want it to look straight and square with your piece like it is now. So I'll stop hitting it. No when to quit. No when to let off, fellas. No when to let off. So that looks good enough there. Give it a quick dunk so that's not moving around on me. That'll help lock that in so I can brush it a little bit better without it bending. And there you have it. So now all we have to do is go ahead and drill it and then finish it off with something. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can finish this off. Uh, you could do brass brushing. That may work. Uh, you could just take and highlight the edges with a little bit of wire wheeling or a little bit of sanding, light judicial sanding on the edges. And then there's this technique that I'm about to show you. I'm going to go over to the vise after I get the holes drilled here, and I'm going to show you one finishing technique that I believe helps pop, make this thing pop off the side of the wall, um, you know, and really draws people's attention after it's painted. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll get this drilled, and I'll be right back with you here in just a second, and we'll be over at the vise. So here's the final portion. The final portion of the whole project is that we're going to take and use sandpaper, 240 grit, to take and highlight all the edges. Now, the benefit of using sandpaper over an angle grinder or a belt sander is the fact that you get a really nice smooth finish on this without any having any flats or beveling of edges or anything like that. You, if anything, you get a nice rolled over edge and it's a really pleasing look. So you want to go ahead and finish this up with a little bit of high grit sandpaper. I suggest 240 grit, unless it's really kind of, if, if you got more scale on there than you like, you could, or a heavier forging scale, uh, you can go down to like a 180 grit or 120 or something like that, and then move up to a little higher grit afterwards. But this is basically what you want to do with the piece and just use the sandpaper exactly like you see me doing here. So let's get to the pricing of this item. This item you can sell by itself for about 25 bucks uh, on your shelf online. And uh, it's a great little, great little item that you can do in a production kind of mindset, do a bunch of these all at once in several different stages. And it's a really nice addition to your shop and your store. Uh, that you can take and do. Now, you can get a little bit higher price for these items, say if you sell them for a set. So you could get up to $50 per hook, say if they were mounted to a board, and say you had like five hooks mounted to a really nice stained board, maybe some reclaimed lumber with some holes drilled in it and some mounting hardware to make this a jacket coat rack or something like that. You could get up to Again, like I said, $50 a hook, charge about $250 for the coat rack, and you're in business. So it really does help out to have this little 
this little tool in your arsenal. Again, like I said, the free template for this hook will be over at my website, blacksmithpdfs.com. So I encourage you to go check that out. If you purchase a power hammer plan or some sort of tooling plan while you're there at checkout, that goes to help support the channel if you enjoy what Jessica and I do here uh, on it. And we greatly appreciate that support so we can continue to make free content like this uh, for everyone here on YouTube. We greatly appreciate all of our supporters that do that on a monthly basis for us. Uh, you know who you are, and we are blessed to have you as a part of our membership here at Christ and Ironworks. So other than that, that's basically it. You could do a little bit of polish work on this if you want to and burnish the back, the, the undertones underneath with the buffing wheel and be able to buff off the highs and get them even shinier yet. That might look nice. The shinier you get it, the more pop it'll have after you paint it. Now I do suggest painting these uh, as they are an indoor item and they're going to be roughed up with coats or things hanging from them. If you do an oil finish, some people, somebody takes a really nice white coat or somebody that has a nice fancy jacket and they put it on your hook and they get some sort of crusty, uh, you know, extra bit of oil or something on the collar of their jacket, they may not be too happy. So I suggest painting these. Again, you can get about $25 each and I think they're a pretty great item. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to leave that like and uh, go check out the template for this again over at the website blacksmithpdfs.com. That's it for today. I'm going to get back to forging. God bless you and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.